Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this wondrous gathering of community leaders, change makers, and innovators. I'm so excited to embark on this journey with you guys. Um, as you already know, my name is Kansas, and I'm incredibly honored to be one of your guides as we learn together in this adventure. Uh, so we're going to do a quick uh, we're just going to talk about the objective for today. We'll do a quick recap of, of the overall course objectives, and then we'll get right into it. So in the next few minutes, we'll be diving into a powerful mission to understand the bigger picture of the collective. So, um, oh, sorry. So you might be wondering, what exactly is the Battery Collective and how can it transfer from our community? Well, it's much more than storing energy. It's about building relationships and bonds that nurture resilience learning what it means to work to make decisions collectively, and creating a culture around a force towards a just transition. So imagine a future where members of our community has a network of care they can rely on. One where they know that they belong to a group that cares and will support them, a group where they'll become together to tackle emergencies head on, and where they can build and thrive a network that uplifts and supports everyone. Today, we'll be exploring the battery collectively, how it fits into your community. We'll discuss and examine emergency scenarios, come up with creative solutions for diverse problems, and reflect on how to promote inclusive culture that nurtures communities' goals. So the most exciting part is you, the center of this transformation. Each of you brings a unique insights, experiences, and passions that will shape your community's collective success. So let's charge up our enthusiasm and unlock our imaginations and em embrace the opportunity to create a resilient and empowered community. I hope you're all ready to take that adventure with me. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Yasir to uh, just talk about the brief uh, goals of this course. Peace everyone, uh, welcome. I think there might be some new names on the list here. Uh, I'm not sure if I read them all last time, but looks like there's some new people. So welcome everyone. Um, yeah, yes, here with People Power. And we're going to hop into the overall course objectives. So we have one. We reviewed this last week, so we're just going to recap real quick. Participants are able to are activated to set up community backup power supplies. That participants are able to organize and host community meetings that participants are able to make the connection on how to use these tools to organize more shared resources. Um, a lot of a lot of things come up uh, when we're talking about community. Um, probably the first thing that comes up is uh, what is a community um, and like what's why is there a need to organize? Um, we're in a, a system and some of us can see it more clearly than others, but uh, we're in a system that's that's really designed by everything that we interact with in the majority of our society to disorganize us, to keep people separate. Um, really what that does is it, it breaks the connection that people have. Um, that connection that people have is ultimately community. So, one of our objectives here is to try to help under individuals and ourselves to reimagine what community looks like and to reconnect what what we used to all have. Um, everyone, I do believe that in our spirit, we all have a, a desire. We have a draw. Um, some may say it's magnetic. Some may say it's karmatic. Some may say that it's spiritual, but we have a draw to community. We have a draw and a connection to other individuals. Um, as I'm saying this, my screen for some reason has changed and I can't see any other individuals, which is disturbing. Okay, now it's back. <laughs> Feels weird when I can't see faces. Um, I'm not used to virtual communication. It's anyway, that's another story. So, um, yeah, allowing individuals to get back to and to reestablish those connections of community. So one of the things that uh, as we're developing the uh, battery co-op um, that comes up is community. And this everything is cent centered around community and try to understand why um, there is a need in the community 
and trying to deconstruct what that need is. So that's a, a bigger picture. We're going to get into that later on in our coursework. Um, right now, we're just going to focus on making sure everyone understands that that disconnect, we're trying to help everyone and ourselves to try to reconnect that disconnect. Um, through that, we're hoping that individuals will be able to see community on a different level um, and decide and make the choice and decision to interact with community on a different level. Um, and when I say community, it's it's that person that looks like us, you know, that's um, with us, that looks like us, that may be a person across the street, it may be your next door neighbor. Um, there's a lot of different definitions of community and how you guys choose to use um, one of the tools that we're going to present here, which is the battery, is up to you. How you define your community is also up to you. Um, just understand that there are some strings that we don't see that go on in the background that is designed to uh, to disorganize people and to break that community. Um, so more about the participants are able to connect on how to use these tools. So that's, again, just being able to see the, the whole objective and to be able to hone in on that and to, to see that um, the battery is actually just one resource. We're talking about more than just the battery here. Um, so hopefully we can draw those lines and today's exercise will, um, if it works out well, help us to draw those lines. I'll pass it back to Ken, sorry, pass it to uh, Crystal. Thank you. And because we say so much about how this is all about the community, um, the key is you. Uh, Ken, um, Ken, were you going to say something about these slides? I mean, nope, they're just, you just keep going. Okay, the key yeah. is you, and uh, let's let's um, jump straight into slide four for us to know where are you all coming in from? So what we've done is we have created a little slide for you all to, to map out where we're all coming from. I'm trying to pull up the slide to talk to everyone. So I'm dropping in chat if you are able to open up the slide where you will see on the right hand side there will be boxes where you will be able to take a box drag it to the side maybe sometimes you get some you pick this box and somebody would take your box it's okay there's many many boxes there's no scarcity of boxes here for us to practice working on similar things you just grab it and write down your name and we because we all know we're all coming together for some sort of emergency. We'll be really interested in to know what is the emergency shed that you're coming in from. So, for example, are you here um, because you're you're? I'll, I'll just use me as an example. I'm Crystal Huang. I am based in California, specifically the territory of the Chechenyo-speaking Ohlone people in the so-called Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland Bay Area. And for me, my emergency shed would be wildfires and earthquake, maybe drought sometimes. So for me, I'll write down crystal, comma, wildfire, um, earthquake, and maybe drought. And that's, and we'd love to just kind of see where is everyone coming in from? And if you cannot open this link, it's okay, drop in chat and we will add you to, and drop in chat and also then include like, what state you're in um, because the boxes are so big we could probably the box would just be able to cover the entire state anyway so we can if you cannot participate in the slide if you just draw you can just drop in chat and i will be happy to add you to the map and we can see yeah so Kansas, you don't want to get into um presenter mode because if you get into presenter mode you can't see people adding it but right now we're seeing we got Jody uh, Judy from California with the wildfires very close to where I am. Hello. Um, we also have Kyle dealing with heat waves. Hi, Kyle. Extreme weather. We got Rachel. It looks like in Florida for hurricanes, floods, heat, and we have Jen with winter storms, floods, heat. Yeah, heat is truly um at the top of our mind these days because we're in the summertime and i'll just make more boxes so then people can grab them 
and I can grab one and so I can write down what people are writing in chat. And move slowly, there is no rush here. You know, the beauty of moving slowly is that you are going to be less likely to be frustrated when somebody grabs your boxes. And when we're less frustrated, we're able to be in community more. Okay, so let's see, let's see. I'm seeing- if you're, um, if you're not part of the continental United States, if you can just place your marker on the upper left-hand corner. So there was a comment in the chat about Guam. So if you could just add to the upper uh, left-hand corner, we can get those uh, catalogs as well. Thank you. And we also have another in Alabama. So Robert, hello. And it doesn't have to be accurate. We're now just kind of see where everyone is scattered in. Hi, Stephanie in Michigan. Hi, Stephanie. Got unreliable utility company in Michigan. I'm gonna drop you to Michigan. <laughs> This is testing my geography here. Oh my goodness, sorry, I moved the map by accident. Well, so we got Jen from Western Buffalo. What disaster emergency shed are you in, Jen? Okay, got Kwame from Little Rock, Arkansas. A tornado, heat wave, lightning storms. Great. Well, it's so good to see now. What do we notice here? Oh no, looks like the map I moved a slightly bit, slight bit, so all the Californians are <laughs> are out of the map. So my apologies. The map is going to move a little bit, and that's okay because accuracy is not the point. The point is we're doing it together. About twenty years, all those Californians would be in the water anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we got each other to take care of each other. Okay, well, let's keep doing this, continue doing this. Um, we want to just move on, but it's just so great to be able to see where everyone's coming from. It seems like we have a lot of Californians. We also got Guam. We also, yeah, I guess everyone on the West Coast is in California. And we have a lot of folks in the East Coast, Midwest area, and the South not so much on the Plains area, but it's good to see we have um, a lot of commonality with flooding, with storms, heat waves. Um, crumbling infrastructures. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also have the scary truth, uh, scary reality in the Gulf South of the coastal erosion. So here we are together through the Battery Collective, thinking about how can we look at one example of way for us to be in community to take care of each other. Um, so I wanna take a brief moment to kind of explain what the Battery Collective is. A lot of us will think of it as like, oh, it's a battery sharing program. We get to share battery, we get to share these technology, we can take care of each other. I wanted to invite a different way of looking at things. So. Um, I want to take a moment right now. It seems like all of us have some sort of a power. That's why we're able to call in. And so take a moment to think about, like, where does your power come from? I think right now my power, I made from my laptop, my power comes from my charger and my charger is taking power from the outlet. Maybe you're running your power from some battery, which is great. 
um, and think about how does your power get into the battery? So now from my outlet, where does my power go to get to the outlet? I look outside, I see, I wonder if you can see the outside, but look, if I turn this screen around, you can see some, some power lines right out there. These infrastructures are bringing these electrons to my house. I can, I can literally see the wire connecting to my house that then gets into my outlet. That then comes to my charger, comes to my laptop, and I get to talk to you. So we have these physical infrastructure with the power lines out there. The power lines then connect to some sort of an electricity generator. The generator, gen electricity generation could be coming from my neighbor's solar. It could come from a solar or some sort of a power plant that's in my neighborhood or through some transmission line, this giant big metal power station that is connecting big, heavy power, um, ultra um, power lines to bring heavy load of power to me. So this infrastructure is what is existing today to allow me to have power. And as we know, we have all these emergency that is happening that's making these infrastructure unreliable. Of course, we also know that who's managing these power lines, they are, they in many ways exist to, for private accumulation of wealth. As Steph mentioned, the unreliable power company, utility company. How do we make sure that we have our own solution so we don't have to always rely on these either for-profit company or sometimes municipal utilities that are not actually running the business well. So here comes battery collective. And one way to look at it is when the power goes out for me, that means the power lines that's connecting from the outside to my house no longer works. So what do I do? But I know I can see when it's dark and I'm sitting in the dark, I can see there are some people might not be on this block, but a few blocks down still have their lights on. So how do I connect the power from there to where I am right now? And one way to do it is just like those people who are currently using batteries for your phone or for your laptop to store it somewhere. So if we can move a battery at, at hardware that charges and that collects all the energy from a few blocks down that still have power to bring it over to my house, then I have power too. So in some way, we're talking about a people powered electricity grid so this is why as my dear friend here dear friends here kansas and yes here have talked about so much so far it's all about the community it, it feels very preachy but it's really about how do we be in community with each other so we can share so then we as humans can start to be in relationship with each other so then when these hardware this line these any of these hardware fails we don't have to be stranded because we're conscious of it. Right now, a lot of times our relationship, mine included, my relationship with energy is just consuming. I have no idea what electricity is powering my, my laptop right now. I have no idea where it's coming from, how far it's coming from. All I know is, is my laptop on? It is, and I'm gonna do my thing and I don't think about these things. And these are blessing to be able to do, but at the same time, if I want to be prepared, I don't know what to do. So how do we practice this muscle, as Yasir said, so that we can rely on each other is in many ways what the Battery Collective is all about as we look at battery as one hardware, one tool to help us to be in community with each other. And so that, that is in many ways, in a nutshell, what the Battery Collective concept is so that we can rely on each other when the system and the infrastructure fails. And this is why, people's involvement and engagement consciousness is so important. And with that said, um, if there's no questions in chat, I'm gonna pass it over to Kansas for us to do a little bit of exercise for us really think about what does that look like in my community? <laughs> Thank you, awesome, Crystal. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the part of the, uh, the series where we kind of flip it back on you and really want, can you guys hear me first of all? Okay, cool. Uh, flip it back on you and really want you to start really engaging and thinking about what we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have like a little sim simulation scenario here where we're going to uh, break out into small groups and um, act as if we're in some one of our emergency situations. So we just talked and listed a whole bunch of different possible um, 
types of disaster sheds that are, exist uh, across the country and even across the world. Um, and right, the idea is to kind of think of if you had uh, a shared battery, walk yourself through how that process would look. Um, and the idea is really to just brainstorm and get yourself in the shoes of thinking how to communicate with each other and how you guys are going to collectively solve a problem together. Um, I, does that make sense that you guys want to add anything? Other prompts? You're muted. So what's going to happen is we're going to get into a small group breakout session for 15 minutes where you'll be paired with uh, two to three different people in the group. And it's just like the battery collective scenario. Like, okay, we just learned that there are two people or two families are out there without power. And then you have to decide with your small group, like what is a scenario that's no, no power? What do they actually need? Now, how do we um, get the power to them? They need a battery and you happen to have this community shared battery. Let's brainstorm a potential pathway forward. And we have 15 minutes to figure this out. It's like a little communication game or a little, little game here. Um, just want to pause and see if there's any question. I'm going to create the breakout rooms. Cool, thank you. And just remember like uh, in a battery collective, your voice matters, your ideas matter. Uh, and the it's you know about the power to illuminate your community's resilience so uh, think about what your community specifically has its strengths and maybe even weaknesses and try to problem solve it seems like we have a question from elisa are you going to give us more specific any specific or scenarios um i mean if you if you don't uh want to have to think of a scenario you can certainly just think of um you know, just a general power outage uh, no, in your neighborhood. We're not going to give you more specifics. Okay. You and your group can uh, figure that out. <laughs> Perfect. That discuss whatever your scenario is. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and you'll prompt us into what room we're going to be in, right? Yes. We want to make sure there are no clarifying questions. You will be with three other people. So you'll figure. So right now, all we know is, uh-oh, power is out for some people. and there are two groups of people who need battery and you are in this group you're in a group of three to four people now this is your battery collective right now and you in your small group you need to determine how do we get the battery to them so in order to get there you have to think about what's a scenario what's the situation what are the barriers what are some things you have to overcome and just notice how the group conversation goes Distance between groups, all of that, let's decide in your group. Like try to figure it out together. It's a simulation. I see Alice, you're, you got your hands up. Quick question, Do we, did you say, uh, and maybe I was unclear, we can make our own list of assumptions or? That's or, right. Okay. Exactly. Freedom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah. So as you can tell right now, it can be anything. And there's three more other people's idea floating. You don't know yet. And the experiment is for you to see where you can get in a small group. Any other question? Uh, peace, everyone. I think we have a couple, maybe a, a person or two that may have not been part um, of the initial discussion, but we're just going to move forward and we'll try to recap anything. Uh, if you don't pick up on it already. So um, we had eight groups. I think it was about three to four people per group. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious, just trying to get some feedback on what everyone ran into. Um, typically, like in group dynamics, especially if there's small groups sometimes, even if there's big groups, but there'll be vocal people and people that are not so vocal. So if you are vocal in your your breakout room, um, thank you. If you were not vocal in your your breakout room, I'm really curious about your thoughts. I'm curious about everyone's thoughts, but I would like to start with the individuals who are not as vocal in the breakout groups. Because um, sometimes when we talk, we don't hear very well. So the individuals that weren't speaking very much sometimes can provide different insight. So um, let's 
go down the list maybe group one um just curious about what you guys came up with what was your situation that you ran into your emergency i think for us i know we did have one person who um doesn't have a mic or is like using some sort of a uh, public library computer and doesn't have a mic or a camera. Um, so they were just chatting us. But for the most part, our group um, was able to kind of think about like, what are the tools that we have each of ourselves at our disposal? And then what are some additional ways that we could try and prioritize or um, triage to try and meet a lot of the needs that um, the scenario offered. Um, so one of the things that we thought of was kind of factoring in like what the additional needs were as far as like medical needs, communications, whether any one of the two separate groups might need um, some sort of transportation or something like that and trying to prioritize in different ways along those lines. And then um, we also, um, what was also brought up was um, a couple of our group members have access to uh, industrial, like a hundred foot long, I believe, um, power cords. And so um, an additional thought that we had was thinking about whether we have a means of charging multiple locations at the same time without having to move the batteries too much um, and you know how we might be able to kind of shift power from one location to another or think about what additional tools at our disposal um, could be used to preserve the function of the different uh, things that we need. So like a refrigerator, you charge that refrigerator. If you have ice packs, you can keep that refrigerator cooler longer or cool down other refrigerators without needing to provide power to those refrigerators. Um, so things like that are what we thought about. Thank you for sharing. Uh, group two, uh, what was your emergency and how did you guys deal with it? But I was the vocal one, so I'm letting them come. <laughs> Okay. I can jump in. Yeah. Um, so for group two, I'll, and I'll drop it in the chat too, because I had it all typed up. Uh, we had a heat disaster situation. So we kind of um, tried to think through and be really flexible, I guess. Um, and so we were, we wanted to assess the situation, establish if there were other power resources in the region, if it was really wide, wide, widespread. Like sometimes the church might have a, a, a backup as well. Um, get communications with the groups in need. Um, so whether that's uh, directly calling them or having someone go over there and check out and make sure everyone's okay. Um, it would probably be a good idea to set up a central hub for multiple people if they can move, if that's possible in, in whatever situation you're in. Um, you can assess if somebody needs on-site care to triage something really big, but recognize that resource is now out of play or for multiple people. So just kind of being strategic about what's going on and the widespreadness and making decisions. Um, you can put out some social media blasts to those who can see it to broadcast your need to try to get some more support or resources in the rest of your community. community. And then also making sure that our own resources are charged and ready for an emergency. So this was all under the assumption that like, our own phones are at full and all that. That's what we did. Thank you. Uh, group three, what was your emergency? Um, I'll pop in and then anyone else from the group can speak as well. Um, so and just, we come up with the sorry, sorry, just so everyone knows, I'm gonna kind of progress through the next one. So if you could just state your emergency and then we'll kind of move through that way. Oh, we didn't really come up with a particular emergency. It was just like a power outage. Okay, power outage. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move to group four. We had um, we had some that was 
kind of quiet, but I would really like to hear what she thought. Yeah, just group four, what, what is your, what was your emergency? It was just a general power outage. Okay. And then I'll move to group five. I'm not doing this. Um, I saw someone drop in chat. Uh, there's no apologies for, it's just for time. That's the reason why I'm progressing through. I do want to actually, if we had more time, I'd like to listen to everyone's uh, spill, but. Well, I'd like to say one thing that I think that we were, we, we had, a, I've heard all the other ones and I think that we did have uh, some good ideas as far as uh, knowing what our resources were, power mapping, knowing who the people are that would be able to help us prior to the incident, and also MOUs on how to access the actual battery so that we wouldn't get it lost in the matter and during an emergency. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Uh, was that group four or group three? Four. Four. What was your emergency group four? General power outage. Okay. And then group five? Also a general power outage. And group six. Did we have a group six? I'm not okay. sure if we were group six, but I wasn't paying attention, but oh. uh, it was general power outage for the group I was in. Okay. We may have been group six and it was just general power outage. Okay, how about seven? Group seven, excuse me. Yeah, we were, Eloy was in group seven, general power outage. Okay, and how about group eight? We talked about um, supporting elders in our community. So both New Orleans, um, like after hurricanes and then also Chicago in terms of high rises. So both up high and down low, but supporting our elders. Nice, thank you for that. Um, so with that, I mean, I'd, I'd like to actually just make a couple of comments uh, before passing it to Crystal. So um, one of the things is I saw that there were a lot of like general power outages. The majority of them were. We had a heat disaster with one supporting elders. Um, I just threw out this course. We are focused around a battery and I'll, I'll probably continue to say this just to kind of break the mentality that we're here to talk about a battery. Um, but think about those uh, social uh, emergencies that are out there as well. I did see on the map that a few people put down some social issues. Um, social issues are emergencies. Um, and those social issues can also uh, stimulate the activation of community um, and community projects and community resources. Um, someone talked about a refrigerator and it's insightful to have ice in your refrigerator, you know, so the, the um, temperature can stay low for longer to preserve the food that's in there, even after the refrigerator is unplugged from the wall. Um, it can be as equally powerful if you have one refrigerator and you have five people using that one refrigerator. So definitely I'm going to try to reinforce thinking outside of the box. So if you have five households and they have five refrigerators, you can take the non-essential items out of the refrigerator, say, hey, we can actually power one refrigerator Let's all put our stuff in Williams or Tina's refrigerator. Um, just kind of in that same realm of the ice to think outside of the box. Think out, literally think outside of the ice box. Um, so we'll go more over that. And I don't want to crunch time. So just a couple of uh, food for thought there. I'll pass it to Crystal. We still have five minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll keep going. Um, so more things. Uh, so I do appreciate everyone's participation in the exercise. Um, so a lot of the things that I heard that were shared that we had time to, to listen to um, come up often. And usually general governance is, is, is a big issue. Um, how do we, we have this resource, we have this battery, like how do we prioritize um, one, what's classified as an emergency. If someone comes and says, I have a social emergency, like my emergency shed, which I didn't share with you guys on the, the map is, uh, is um, uh, as oppression. <laughs> so we have individuals who don't, don't have permanent housing. Um, 
literally probably right outside of my window here. So, um, you know, if I presented that as an emergency and someone else is like, oh, my refrigerator is offline. How do we, as a community in these situations, prioritize what's an emergency and what's not an emergency? Um, and these are just questions that I'm gonna bring up. I'm not, we're not gonna search out solutions right now. In the larger coursework, hopefully at the end, individuals will be able to think about that and then understand that those answers don't lie necessarily in the individual, but more in the communal space. Um, also, you know, someone says, uh, I want to I want to use the battery to power my music. It's very important to me. And someone else is like, I want to use my battery to power a CPAP machine. Um, again understanding where that that boundary is when it's things where it's recreation versus a necessity i think it's easy for us to put our minds around when it's something such as a, a social emergency versus a a physical emergency i think that's where sometimes we need a little bit more guidance a little bit more direction or a little more options i think is the word that i'm looking for so we're going to try to present options um the governance is important uh Governance is, is a very interesting topic because sometimes people can get lost in that and sometimes you can lose people in that, which are two different things. So, um, and a lot of people work fine in those, that framework, other people's don't, other people's, other individuals do not work fine in that framework. So when you're looking at community and making things accessible, which, Ultimately, we all want to have an accessible community. These are things just to consider. Everyone doesn't look at everything exactly the same. Um, an emergency for one person or another person may not be an emergency, depending on the members of your community. You're not going to be able to change the members of your community. However, to help and try to assist them the thinking and seeing things in a different light is possible. So the bridge that we're trying to build is the bridge on where you are, where I am and how we can both meet somewhere in constructing this bridge in the middle. So seeing things in the same light. And I went a minute over, Crystal. Perfect, Sorry. thank you for that. And in the ideal world, we'd really love to have a longer time for all of us to hear from each other in the small group, but we are also trying to balance the tension of, we only wanna ask of everyone's time for just one hour a week. And we really want to make sure we highlight the important things for you to take away, um, some exciting things to, for the, that we really love for you to encourage you to do is for you to share on Canvas, the platform that we're holding everything we're learning together um, for this week to share what your takeaway for your groups are in, and just share with each other and you can learn from each other. Um, the exercise is an interesting exercise. I went to different groups and say hi and see how everyone's feeling. And I'm getting a lot of really fun, positive responses from a number of people who said this is their jam. They really want to love, love this exercise because in many ways, the exercise is not about the answer. The exercise is us as people thinking about how to solve problem. And you can make that as an exercise for you to do with your coworkers, your community groups that you're thinking about potentially sharing this resource with your neighbors, your friends, your household, just like, hey, let's just pretend that we actually have this shared resources that's called a shared battery. And we found out that there are people out there who need it and they're contacting us. What is some way to get to them? And just brainstorm and just kind of like, just experience different way of practicing um, community problem solving together. Um, a big takeaway we really want to to for you to think about is what does your community look like you just experience in that simulation your community of three to four different people and feel that community like your community group maybe talk a little more technical stuff maybe your community group talk a little more about how do we prioritize elders your community group maybe talk about like the documents and the liability and the risk and how to prevent that Every single person bring different things to the group. And when you're together, you're this beautiful, unique group. What does that look like? And just always noticing. That's right, Jordan. So like just noticing that as a homework would love for you to take away. And if you can share on Canvas, just 
what you learned from your, your group today, what you came up with, and then also think about what does your community look like in your place that you're thinking about creating this backup, this shared battery emergency, uh, emergency battery. And so for our next week, then we are going to actually talk about the batteries. We're going to learn about the batteries, what they look like. I know there were some people in the small group was like, what does the battery detail look like? Next week is going to be the place that we're going to talk about that detail. Um, but you probably can kind of get a sense that we're putting so much emphasis on the people and we're going to do that too. So then when we talk about the technology, we're not getting lost in the technology. We're thinking about how we're actually using the battery as our tool to build this people's infrastructure. So when those power lines are failing us, those infrastructure, we can take care of each other. So thank you all so much for being here. Big love for you all and your groups, your group member. Rest well tonight. Hope you get to play some music or even enjoy some silence or the sound of your surrounding. And think again, and what does your community look like? And we will see you same time, same place last next week. Peace. And so we have one question in the chat. Oh, sorry um, about that. Alice Song, uh, and the answer is yes, we do have uh, documentation regarding the framework for governance. Um, everything that you need for as regarding documentation and how to set up a battery uh, co-op will be covered. Um, so we won't leave you guys going, darn, we need this. Yeah, we got the governance thing covered. We got the technical aspect covered. So rest assured, we're taking you someplace. <laughs> Thank you for the question.